in the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall you welcome to another spirit filled message on christocentric message if you're new to this channel i would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well i would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth it's going to bless you your graces are going to be imparted onto you and then god is going to visit your home thank you for watching stay blessed one of the areas of confusion in our lives and in the body of Christ is the inability to accurately discern the will of God for our lives. Hence, confusion, even among the most matured of believers. There are so many of us who are unable to make progress in different areas of our lives because of our inability to accurately discern the will of God. I have taken out time in recent times to study this subject because I believe that it's useful in my own life and in the body of Christ. And I think that which I will share will bless you. It's a very broad subject, but wherever we stop, because I want us to pray. Hallelujah. I want us to really pray. So there's been confusion. Lord, should I stay in Zaria or should I be in Abuja? Lord, should I do this? Should I do that? The inability to create a system around our lives that helps us to discern what we believe God is communicating. There are people right now who have gotten married. They love God, but in their minds, they believe that their marriages were not according to the will of God. Are we together? Please pay attention. This is very important. There are people today who have been in regions where they believe it's not the will of God. There are people who are in all kinds of confusion and these things can create a lot of tenseness, a lot of worry. Um, is there a system in God by which a man can accurately discern the will of God. Are we together? Because the Bible tells us in Matthew chapter 6, when you read from verse 10, Jesus teaching the disciples how to pray. He told them that the kingdom of God only comes when and if his will is being done. Are we together? So he ties the manifestation of the kingdom of God to his will, not your will. In fact, we see how much Jesus Christ so desired the will of the Father to be done. This is what he said in Gethsemane. He said, Father, if it be possible, this is my will now, take this cup off me. Nevertheless, not my will, but your will be done. There are so many lives that are in a state of perpetual dissatisfaction. Some is almost like a stigma and a guilt they carry for the rest of their life because they feel that at one point or the other, they did not accurately discern the will of God. Businesses, jobs, marriages, ministries there are many pastors who believe that they wrongly went to certain ministries they just felt that no i did not hear god well and the sad part of it listen is that there are people who took actions based on what at the time they were taking the actions they perceived and believed it to be the will of god is god helping us tonight so at the time they applied for the job at the time they went abroad for instance at the time they did what they did 
they believed and perceived at that time that it was the will of God. So part of the things that I'm going to be discussing today is what exactly is the will of God? What are the dimensions to the will of God? Can the will of God change? Are we together? This is very important. It will make us mature and it will make us be able to walk circumspectly. Hallelujah. Because your advancement in life and my advancement in life will be tied to my understanding the will of God part time and the ability to take steps in that direction. Did you know I discovered especially recently that believers are not so rebellious. If they know what the will of God is, they have the stamina to follow along. The challenge usually and largely is that the will of God is not known. And so men are left in limbo as to what directions to take in their career, in their lives. And there have been all kinds of teaching and theories about the will of God. So pay attention. Hallelujah. The word logos, write it down please. L-O-G-O-S. Is the word that is translated in John chapter 1 verse 1 as word. W-O-R-D. Is the word logos. So when the Bible says in the beginning was the word. The word there is the word logos. And the word logos means the thoughts of a man. Please write it down. The thoughts, the thinking of a man. The word logos means the ideas of a man. The thoughts of a man, the ideas of a man. Number three, the word logos also means the desire or the intention of a man so when we talk about the word logos we mean number one the thoughts of a man number two the ideas of a man number three the desires or the intention of a man then number four the communications of a man the speakings of a man which is consistent with what he's thinking. The speakings of a man. For most people, it's only number four that we know. So every time we say the word of God, what comes to our mind is just the communications, the speakings of God. That is correct. But the Bible says, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. It says, for I know the thoughts, Jeremiah 29, 11. Please give it to us. Jeremiah 29, 11. It says, for I know the thoughts that I think. So we see that it does not start with God speaking. It starts with God thinking. Are we together? Jeremiah 29, 11. For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, saith the Lord. Right? Thoughts of good or of peace and not of evil. Right? To bring you a what? A future and an expected end. Not just an end. An expected end. I know the thoughts that I think towards you said the Lord. They are thoughts of good or thoughts of peace. So God is thinking. Now listen. The will of God represents his idea, his desire. Are we together? His thoughts for a man, for a people, that's the will of God. So when we talk about the will of God, there's no mysticism around it. It's a communication of God's desire, his intent, his idea on that subject matter or on your life. The will of God represents his thoughts, his idea, his desire for your life or for whatever subject it is that you're considering. Now, I want you to know something about the will of God. Listen, the will of God is applicable only as far as his purposes are concerned. This is very important. The will of God is applicable 
only as far as his purposes are concerned, meaning that anything that does not directly um, culminate to the birthing of the purposes of God, his will, of, his will is not committed there. You are not going to hear God's opinion over a matter that is not directly tied to the advancement of his kingdom. Are we together? Let me give you an instance. I can't remember what I ate today, but I can assure you that it was not God that told me to eat it. Are we together? If I decide to take this water now, it was not the Holy Spirit that spoke to me. Are we together? Because com whether I take swan water or um, ragolis or whatever it is, that activity does not in any way interrupt the advancement of God's kingdom. Are we together? So the will of God in terms of his sovereign desire is not committed to act there. He gave man a will also. Follow me. Now, the will of man is also useful as far as our work in this kingdom is concerned. So there are two wills here. There is the will of God or what I call the sovereign will of God because there are different theological explanations about the will of God. There is what according to theologians when you read Romans chapter 12 when you read um, um, from verse 1 and 2 verse 1 specifically right it talks about uh, verse 2 sorry it talks about the good the perfect the acceptable will of God that's not my subject of discussion today those are just theological understandings and there is a place for them but my my assignment is to help us understand how to discern the will of God To ask God whether you should bob your hair or not is silly because according to his wisdom, that matter is within the jurisdiction of your human will to solve. Are you getting what I'm saying now? Whether I bob or I don't bob, as far as my assignment and the advancement of the kingdom as committed to me is concerned, it is inconsequential. So really God does not care. But for Samson, it was a serious issue because his babbing or no babbing contained the secret to his strength which made him a judge over Israel. And so because of that, God had to put his mouth even in the issue of his hair. So God is only committed and he will manifest his will along the dimensions where the advancement of his kingdom is concerned. Do you understand? This is very important. The third thing I want you to know is your human will is useful and it can make decisions also that are consistent with the will of God. There is the human will. In fact, to be honest with you, the one factor that makes us different from every other creation is that God gave us a mind. And in that mind, there is what we call um, psychologically and theologically also will, emotion, intellect right the three components that make up our soul our will our emotions and then our intellect is God helping us now so in birthing the purposes of God there is a mutual interplay of the will of man and the will of God there are certain decisions please pay attention there are certain decisions where God will never allow the will of man to contribute in the decision because of the gravity of that activity with respect to his kingdom. Are we together? There are certain activities that God will leave to the jurisdiction of man's will because regardless of what option the man takes, it will not directly affect him. Listen, if God took away the will of man, then he will be wicked because man would not be serving him willingly. So he made two trees in the Garden of Eden. Are we together? One, he called the tree of what? Life. Is that true? And the other was called the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Why would God put two trees in the garden? I mean, he would have just annihilated everything that could cause man to fall. But he put those two trees. And then he told man. He said, man, 
this is my option for you i want you to live eternally right and so on and so forth however of these three do not eat it of these three you can eat it freely eat of any three and then man chose to violate the purposes of god that leads me to the next point the will of man can superimpose over the will of god God is helping us tonight. The will of man can superimpose over the will of God. That's not to mean the will of God is weak. That's how much liberty, that's how much dominion, that's how much of the God class this man has been made to function. An example of this, according to God's divine order and predeterminate counsel, the nation of Israel were never supposed to have an earthly king. Are we together? It was God's design that his sovereignty be felt even by man. And so he always wanted to be their king. A nation of people who had God only as their king so that they would not be tempted to get into human worship or idolatry or any of such kinds of things. But the Bible says the nation of Israel themselves, they came together and they said, give us a king. Are we together? The crowning of Saul as king was never God's intention. Read your Bible. The people pressured the prophet Samuel. And he went to God and God said, well, if they want a king, so be it. And Saul became the king. And from there, different kings started coming. Is God speaking to us? Are we getting blessed? What then, brothers and sisters, is the key to accurately discerning the will of God? At what point in my decision-making process am I left to my will alone? At what point in my decision-making process should my will completely step aside? At what point in my decision-making process? Because there are things, listen, there are things that... Our human wills can execute. And so leaving it up to God is a waste of time. We may never get results in some of those areas. I'll give you an instance of one of those fallacies. Financial prosperity, for instance. Here's what people say. If it is the will of God to bless me, he will bless me. You get the point now? So if I am not blessed, my assumption is that what? It is not the will of God to bless me. So I am comfortable in poverty. I am comfortable in failure. I'm comfortable in mediocrity. And when they ask me, I say, I have a, a, a premonition in my mind that if God wants to bless me, he's so mighty, he can bless me. Are we together? Now, all through scripture, listen, there are times when we see through the character of the dealings of scripture and that's one of the importance of scripture right the bible says scripture is profitable so when we study scripture among the many things we get is we understand the character of god's dealings with man we know how god deals with man many times in scripture we see that prophets for instance prophesied as commanded is that true they prophesied as commanded you know that although um, they played a role in speaking, they did not contribute to altering what was communicated. There were times when prophets spoke. They spoke in their capacity as prophets. It was never because God said it. They stood upon the strength of their human wills and prophesied. Is that true? Hmm. The transference of leprosy from uh, what's the name of that man from naman to gehazi it was at the personal discretion of the prophet simply because the guy went and chased naman and said elisha has changed his mind he said you should give some of the money are we together so we now see that in that act at his discretion i'll give you another example 
when the children were laughing at Elisha, the Bible says by himself, he called a bear out and it ate them. So we see all through scripture that the wills of men found expression over certain matters. Now, there are two dimensions of the will of God because that's our emphasis. There are two dimensions of the will of God I want us to discern and I want us to understand and discuss tonight very briefly and then we'll pray. Number one is what I call the written will of God. The written will of God. That means the will of God as expressed in scripture. I told us from the beginning of this discussion that the word logos is translated the thoughts of a man, his intention, his desire, his speakings. Now, look up please. The Bible is a compendium of God's dealings with man. Are we together? It is the way he has been dealing with man for many years. And this Bible, theologically speaking, we are told it contains 66 books, you know. But of course, there are lots of theological perspectives like the Apocrypha and other extra biblical texts, the books of Jasha and the Black Sea Scrolls and all of that. There are other books that um, the book of Enoch and several dealings, other books that were written by other apostles like Thomas and the rest that did not make it in the 66 books. But theologically, we accept that by the wisdom of God, that this is a compendium of what we call the Holy Scriptures as given. Are we together? Now, from Genesis to Revelation as we know, is a recorded, um, a documentation of the dealings of God with man. You see the dealings of man with, indiv the dealings of God with individuals, cities, kings, backsliders, animals, people in their, the apex of their spiritual life, people at the lowest level. The, the goal is that by studying this, among the many other things I receive, I can be able to see the synergy of God's character. Are we together? So by my, my intimacy with the word, I come to a point where experientially I can discern what would have been the dealings of God in this matter based on what he has written. It's called the written will of God. Everybody say the written will of God. Say it again, the written will of God. It says forever, O Lord, thy word is settled. And then it says your word is a lamp unto my feet and a light to my path. Is that true? Very, very important. It says heaven and earth will pass away but not one jot will come out of his word. And so we believe that the scriptures are holy. They were not written by perfect men. But then the Bible says holy men wrote it as they were moved of the spirit. So regardless of their temperament, regardless of the, the manipulations in translation, I don't want to begin to give you all the, the church history behind the formation of these 66 books because it's a lot of stories. Are we together? Certain editings in this Bible as we know were not done by those who wrote it. It was done by a class of theologians and different people who translated the Bible and made it consumable for us. Like the King James Version being one of the earliest versions. The story of King James is a very old story. The man who authorized that this be translated purely in English and be communicated to people. It's a long story. Are we together now? But then as we know it, because there are many people who would argue that these scriptures are not complete. And truly speaking, when you study the theological dimension of the word, you will find out that there are certain translations or communications that were an error of the translators. Are we together? It did not hold the original thoughts of those who were speaking. For instance, when you read the encounter of John the Baptist, I mean, uh, John the Revelator, where he says, the Lord speaking to him, I am Alpha and Omega. The word an omega, there is an error in translation. There is no an. It is I am alpha omega. 
but the communication of um, the Old Testament was written in Hebrew and the, Greek test the, the New Testament was largely written in Greek and Aramaic. So that was the communication. And sometimes in these translations, the men who did the translation themselves um, judged certain things based on their spiritual limitations. However, the Holy Ghost has been able to breathe upon this such that even with the imperfections, it is enough to be able to guide you to understand God. Are we together? So the imperfections in the Bible notwithstanding, they are not so grave as to confuse a Christian. Is that true? Now look up please. Before this book, this Bible as we know, was released to believers. Because our generation, we were born and we grew knowing the Bible to be available. Is that true? But that's not the way it was in the old times. In ancient times, they were not giving, you did not go home with a Bible. The Bible, as we know, were called scrolls. Are we together? And these scrolls contained the Pentateuch, the five books of Moses, called in the Hebrew, the Torah. Are we together? These five books were kept together with the prophets and other writings of these people. They were kept and uh, other documents that we call the annals of the kings, the dealings of kings. They were kept in the temple. The priests were the custodians of these scrolls because they were precious. So what would happen is that it's still practiced in the Anglican sometimes you see that they have um, different um, pulpits and with one there is a big Bible that is permanently left there if you are taking the first reading or the second reading you don't come with your own Bible you just come and it's open you look for the scripture you read and go back that was the way it was in Luke chapter 4 for Jesus because the Bible says that one time he came to the temple and it was given to him he didn't come with it are we together it was given to him the prophecy of Esaias, the messianic prophecy, Isaiah 61, was a messianic prophecy. It was speaking about Jesus, but then prophetically to the church. Is God helping us now? And so when um, Jesus began to read that one, the Bible says he folded the scroll when he finished and kept it back and said, this day, right, is this fulfilled in your ears? So the first operation or the first dimension to discerning the will of God is the understanding of the character of God as communicated through scripture. That's what I mean by the written will of God. The written will of God entails understanding his character, not necessarily his unique instructions, his character to know how God would have operated over certain matters. Now, listen, whether you read the Old Testament, you read the New Testament, you read the law, the prophets, the gospels, the epistles, or the book of Revelation, it doesn't matter what dimension. Every book of the Bible contains um, either directly or prophetic representations of God's dealings with man. Now, when I study the Bible, listen, what is happening to me is that I'm bringing my spirit to oneness with the way God does his things. Are we together? That's what we call righteousness. There is the gift of righteousness, but there is the operation of righteousness where you understand God's ways of doing things. Are we together? Then the second dimension of this written word are direct instructions that are written in the Bible. Direct instructions. There are certain opinions of God he did not live in the dark. It was clearly stated. One example. There is nobody who gets up right now. A man wanting to marry a man. Are we together? And then he's trying to pray or find out. Is it really the will of God for me to marry James? Or to marry Junior? Or to marry whoever? The will of God on that matter was not left in the dark. Therefore, 
shall a man a what? Leave his father and mother, comma, and cleave to his. Are we together? And they two shall become one flesh. So two men scripturally cannot become one flesh. Two women cannot become one flesh. Are we together? So you do not attempt to use any other strategy to seek the will of God on that matter. The will of God is written, is clear. It's up to you to align with that will or rebel against it. Let me tell you something about the will of God as written in scripture. God does not necessarily punish people. His laws were designed with consequences attached to them. So, violating those principles expose you by default to certain things. He says, he that breaks the hedge. He didn't say, I will bring a serpent. He that breaks the hedge, the serpent will what? Strike. Bring ye all the tithes into my storehouse that there may be meat. That is my will. I want to increase you, but this is what I have put. And if you refuse, you can choose to refuse. But the moment you choose rebellion, you also choose the consequence that comes with it. The devourer. So God will never cast the devourer out of earth. The devourer is roaming around. Your own assignment is to exempt him from your vicinity. But he is there. Are you getting what I'm saying now? The written will of God. Now, let me tell you the truth. There are many aspects of our lives where by faithfully studying the Bible or being open to quality teachings of the word of God, we are brought into an experiential comprehension of the will of God. All that we teach that we call the laws of the kingdom are a communication of God's will to prosper us. Now you may be asking, is it God's will for me to prosper? You go to the Bible, right? I know the thoughts that I think towards you. Say at who? Not a prophet, the Lord. Thoughts of good and thoughts of peace to bring you Joshua chapter 1 verse 8 This book of the law shall not depart from out of thy mouth But thou shalt meditate therein day and night That thou mayest observe to do all that is written therein Then shall thou make your way prosperous And thou shalt have good success So is my prosperity left in the hands of God? No It left the hands of God since He said thou shalt make your way prosperous And thou shalt have good success Can I go to heaven poor? Yes Will I live in heaven on earth? No. Are we together now? The will of God. Now, let me tell you something. Every time you desire to know the will of God, the first place to find the will of God, I know why I'm taking out time to teach this. Because when I talk about the second dimension, then we're going to talk about a lot of other things if there's time. If there's no time, we we'll continue next week. The word of God or scripture is the primary instrument for discerning the will of God. Please write it down. Scripture is the primary instrument given to men by God to discern the will of God. Your chances of walking in error are greatly minimized when you consult the Bible first as the basis for your comprehension of the will of God concerning a matter. I say this because our generation is gradually drifting away from our perception of the will of God as written in scripture to other extra biblical methods and while they are useful, they are only secondary and inferior as a matter of fact to the written word of God. Say the written will of God. Look up please. Do you know why many Christians are largely confused almost about everything? Let me admit to you that many Christians including preachers don't study their Bibles. They don't study their Bibles. If they want to teach on faith they just go online and google faith. Any material that comes out they just 
pick the scriptures for the teaching but they don't settle down to study the Bible not studying the Bible will keep you in the dark as regards God's will that has already been written there are so many people years ago when we were a lot fewer before koinonia started um, all of us used to participate in holy ghost baptism you know we used to pray for people every night that was how we socialized by getting people filled with the holy spirit and um, i remember most times people would come and they would complain and say i wasn't filled i was prayed for in church and i was not filled with the holy spirit the pastor was even angry with me and he said maybe i'm possessed or whatever it is or i should go and come back but that recognition i remember one of the key things god gave me as a revelation was the fact that he desired for everybody to be filled with the holy spirit with evidence of praying in tongues i searched this thing scripture after scripture until i came to a point where i was absolutely convinced that everyone should be filled with the holy spirit with evidence of speaking in tongues regardless of denominations and that culminated into a dimension of confidence in me because every time I prayed for people, regardless of their hardness, I knew and I expected them to be filled. You see, when the will of God is not known, your confidence shakes. When the will of God is not known over any matter, your confidence shakes. The word of God was given to us as an instrument of discernment. To help us understand his perspectives. Quickly, let's look at the second dimension. The second dimension to the discernment of the will of God is his revealed will. Or the second dimension, if you want to look at the will of God, his revealed will. Revealed will. Revealed will. Revealed will. And the, the nature and the operation of this will, please look up, is on matters where you directly would not get a direct word for from scripture. Are you getting what I'm saying? Issues that concern maybe business, issues that concern marriage, issues that concern certain things that are personal and unique to you. Now, there are times that you will need to make decisions. Please listen. And these decisions, you may not find a direct scripture so that you can get clarity as to what God will want you to do. There's no place written in scripture that says that you should remain in Zaria and be planted in Zaria. Are we together now? You can find scripture about Isaac remaining in, in a land sowing and you can find scripture about people remaining in a land and dying. So you see that's confusing. On different occasions people did the same thing. Let me tell you something about the Bible. That's why we need this second dimension. There are a lot of things that seemingly look conflicting about the will of God. That's why we need his revealed will. Is that true? The revealed will of God communicates his unique desire over the personal issue of concern in your life. The revealed will of God communicates his personal desire. You must understand this. It is unique to you Look up. Let me just go ahead of myself very fast. The unique will of God for me may not be the unique will of God for you. It is dangerous to transfer the communications of God as given to you to someone else because his revealed will comes tailor-made to address the unique situation in your life. Are you getting what I'm saying now? For instance, in the meeting when we were about to start, you saw us doing a lot of foolish things. It was the reception, my discernment on the will of God. He wanted to touch people and bring breakthroughs. And the method through which it will be carried out was also revealed. Are we together? The moment I received it, all that it was left was that I obeyed. 
and then God brought the performance. Now, if you get up and copy what I did and go to a meeting tomorrow and tell everybody shout, they may shout and jump up and down and they pass a paper to you and say you have five more minutes. You have wasted time and wasted the people's time. And then you are angry. The revealed will of God is for our personal advancement. You do not create doctrines out of the revealed will of God to you. Because the revealed will of God to you is as a result of so many things. There are many factors. Just follow me. We are going somewhere. So we have established the fact that there are two dimensions to the will of God. There is the written will of God as communicated in scripture. The written will of God does not have exceptions. Everybody who must walk with God in that area must subscribe to what he has said. God will not create an exemption to the rule just for you as far as it is communicated in the Bible. But the revealed will of God describes his unique communication to you based on your personal need are we together am i are we are we following together please hallelujah an example of situations that will require the revealed will of god number one i'm giving you a few examples you don't have to write them but number one imagine that shadrach is trusting god now for where to settle down as a man I hope you know that if you do not love God and you don't know God, usually you work with your instincts and guess your way around. If it's not God's will, you pay for it. If your instinct suddenly leads you to God's will, you enjoy breakthrough. Most people use instincts. And instincts are a provision from God. But when with the knowledge he knows now, he wants to discern the will of God. You can take your Bible and open it and not directly find where it is written. Or Shadrach wants to ask, oh God, when do you want me to settle down maritally? There's nowhere in the Bible written where you'll find and Shadrach married 2016. Are you getting what I'm saying now? So at that point, you will need to tap into another source of supply to communicate to you what God wants. Let me tell you something. Brothers and sisters, I submit to you, it pays to walk in the will of God. Don't ever let anybody preach you into believing that you can compromise the will of God and make progress in life. No matter what price it takes to be confident that you are walking in the will of God, pay it. It pays. Knowing the will of God gives us confidence. That's why we cast out devils. Because his will is communicated to us. That's why we walk in the anointing. We saw it, we read it, we understood it, we believed it. But the confusion in the body of Christ now is on the revealed will of God. And it's a very technical dimension of walking with God. And so I came up with a few ways. I'm going to give us very quickly three ways. Three ways to discern the revealed will of God. Three major ways. There may be many. You may find them in many textbooks. But three major ways. To discern the will of God. Ready? Number one. Peace and joy. Write it down. Believe me, brothers and sisters, don't trivialize what you are hearing. Peace and joy. The Bible says, look up. It says, the kingdom of God, when it is manifested, it is not in meat and drink, right? But it is in righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. Many believers have walked out of the will of God, the revealed will of God, because they neglected the peace of God. The Bible says the peace of God that surpasses all understanding. Let it garrison your heart. That means the moment I'm about to take a decision or I'm trusting God for a revelation over a decision and your peace supernaturally ceases and there is no joy. Let me tell you, joy is not happiness. Hear me. There are times you will be weeping and yet have joy. 
Joy, don't confuse joy with happiness. Happiness is circumstantial. If I give you 1,000 naira, I expect you to be happy. Not necessarily joyful. There's a song that we used to sing. I still have joy. I still have joy. After all I've been through. I still have joy. I still have peace. I still have peace. After all I've been through. I still have peace. So joy and peace. Let me tell you, there is no man who is not born again who can have peace. He says, peace I give you. Peace is only truly experienced. Not, it's, it's not just the word shalom. Shalom just means a state of rest, right? Nothing missing, nothing broken. No. That's not the word that is used there. He said, the best way to describe that kind of peace was a description of the psalmist. He makes me lie down in still waters. Peace and joy. There are many of us, look up please, as pastors, as leaders, as individuals, as business people, we have been praying and trusting God over certain decisions or we are on our way executing certain decisions and your peace is lifted. Let me tell you, the absence of peace is the absence of the presence of the kingdom which is the absence of the will of God being done because connecting these two scriptures the will of God done his kingdom comes and his kingdom is made of peace and joy so wherever the will of God is, finds expression there is peace and there is joy say amen. amen the peace of God that surpasses all understanding he says is to garrison our hearts praise the Lord so a lady is about to get married please listen what I'm saying is very serious I want us to pay attention God put this in my heart and I believe it's a blessing for all of us are we together you may be born again you may be tongue talking now watch this um, my dear come let me use any of you come now watch this this lady watch this please I come and ask this lady out as an anointed man and she loves God. She knows I'm a responsible person. Are you hearing what I'm saying? I'm using a case study now to show you how to communicate and to discern the revealed will of God. And then all of a sudden, she wants to tell me yes. Now listen, but in her place of prayer, something is happening to her peace and her joy. Let me tell you, when your peace and joy lives, especially when there is no physical reason for it, it's a language in the realm of the spirit. Don't you ever ignore it. When you lack explanation as to why you do not have peace over a matter, it's a sign to go to God. No matter what you are doing, stop where you are and find out. I don't know why I started with the issue of marriage, but let's continue. God is speaking. Listen. Listen. Listen carefully. Do you know that this lady may have her peace and joy being threatened every time she, she thinks of saying yes to me? Now, it's up to her to numb the peace and bind it and cast it and get married to me. And then after many years, what her peace was saying later plays out. Have you seen people who say, I knew it? Every time they get into trouble, they say, honestly, and I knew this thing. God was telling me, I didn't listen. Let me tell you something. The language of peace and joy are standard spiritual languages. Standard spiritual languages of communication. God is helping somebody this night. Now listen, do you know that God may be speaking to this lady and say, there are three things her being afraid of answering me based on what she's feeling can mean three things. Number one, it can mean that as good as I am, as good as she is, we are not the will of God for ourselves. It's as simple as that. You don't have to be bad. Number two, listen, it can be that I am of God for her. However, there are issues in my life 
that can implicate our marriage in the days to come. So the peace refuses to leave you until that issue is dealt with. Assuming there is a covenant and I come from a family where all the women that marry men die. That's what is about to happen to that lady. And so God is that lack of peace. God is saying this may be your will but there are issues to resolve. Now it's not the issue of marriage. There is a spiritual issue or for instance God forbid but God may be speaking and say Joshua Selman if you marry this lady now she may have a problem with barrenness. There is a spirit that is roaming around this life that may cause barrenness and he's saying I am seizing your peace so that you will deal with that issue. Have you not seen people when they are delivered they can get up and fall in love afresh. It's like after that deliverance they get up and they are ready to move because the barrier has given way. We ignore these things and we pay for it. Are we together? A businessman is about to get into trouble and is calling you to come and partner with him. And you love him sincerely. But every time you want to move, something in your spirit just tells you, hold on. And you just say, no way. Anything that will stop my breakthrough. You see, let me tell you, don't just be too scientific with God. There are times you must maintain your spirituality at all times. One little communication of peace can help you. There are many ladies, as you are looking at me right now, you have gotten into needless troubles. If only you listen to the prompting of peace and joy. Peace was speaking, your eyes were seeing money and you followed your way to the grave. Are we together? Peace. Peace. I remember one time, a lady who was getting married, they had even gone very far, very far, as in it was almost that time. And the lady called me and was crying her life and said for over three days she had not slept. She said it's as if she's entering hellfire. Literally, you get up. Sometimes she said she can shake physically. I said something is wrong. Run to your pastor. Go and talk to him. She said, ah, but too many people have been committed. I said, who are the people? Who are the people? They would dance on that day and leave you. Let me tell you something. Be strict about walking in the will of God. I'm only using marriage as a case study, but it applies to every area of your life. Please, I love you and I want to be your roommate. And the moment you, you move, something in you just says no. And you are wondering, ah, but this brother or this sister is, I mean, the sweetest person as can ever be. They don't have to be bad for your peace to leave you. We are talking of the will of God here. The will of God is as designed by God Many of us think that when our peace and our joy leaves over an issue, it simply means it's wrong. You want to travel and your peace and joy leaves. It doesn't mean you are going to have accident. You will arrive safely. It's just not consistent with the will of God for your life. Danger does not have to happen to prove that a thing is not the will of God for your life. It can happen as planned, which is even more dangerous. Is God speaking to someone here? Peace and joy. Number two. Dreams, visions, and prophetic experiences. Dreams, visions, and prophetic experiences. I wish I didn't have to talk about this because I can spend, thank you my dear, I can spend a whole night vigil talking about this a whole night vigil talking about this dreams visions do you know satan has so metamorphosed in his technology of manipulating dreams and visions right now to an extent that many people are even afraid of their dreams and visions the devil is a liar in the name of jesus christ let me tell you something anything that is written in the bible is still being used by god is still a valid tool I know that there are all kinds of perversions. There are many of us, if you hear dream and vision, resentment comes in your heart because almost 95% of everything you have seen as dreams and visions either did not happen in your life or backfired on you. So because of that, you hate dreams and visions. That's not true. The Bible says, Joel chapter 2, it says, I shall pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Are we together? And then it says, your young men shall what? See visions. Your old men shall dream dreams. So visions 
and dreams and supernatural experiences though being perverted is still a tool that God uses to communicate his revealed will to people if I begin to tell you how and why dreams are perverted we we'll have to go into the subject of demonology the operation of demons and I'm not sure our time is, is, is up practically so we'll just leave it for another time but let me tell you something dreams can be manipulated visions can be manipulated prophetic experiences can be manipulated however however listen to me there is a way you walk with God to an extent that your dreams and visions become express revelations I know people today who are walking effortlessly in the will of God thanks to dreams visions and solid notice my use of word solid prophetic experiences not opinions solid prophetic experiences not oh god if it's your will let boss carry us after koinonia that's not a wise that's not a wise riddle that you play with god a lot of us do a lot of stupid things lord if it is your will as i'm coming out charles must tell me good evening that means i should i should go home after exams you know all those kind of things are not wise we we fool ourselves when we do that Look at me. When Herod was planning to kill baby Jesus, did you know that it was a dream? Huh? Imagine if Joseph got up and said, ah, that's a dream, kill with Jesus. Jesus, they would have, they would have, they would have butchered him into pieces. The only thing is he wouldn't have died because he's the word. Are you getting the point now? But he would have sabotaged his agenda because he was wearing a human body. He was in all ways tempted like us. Meaning he could face our limitations. A dream. Joseph was going to divorce Mary. He found out that Mary was pregnant. And Joseph said, you too, you know, I'm not part of this. I don't know what happened to you. I'm about to leave you quietly. The Bible says he was going to leave her quietly. And it was in a dream. The angel said, uh-uh. Do not be afraid to take this woman right it's this and that for that which is in her that holy thing it shall be called the son of the highest and on the strength of that dream joseph came and said no problem he continued with her dreams dreams the salvation of egypt was in a dream the king slept and he had a dream seven seasons of plenty seven seasons of lack he got up with that dream someone interpreted the dream built a strategy around the dream and salvaged the destiny of a nation are we together dreams and visions are real in fact the salvation of we the gentiles happened through a vision is that true i hope you know before acts chapter 10 no gentile was saved it was the jews right it was in Acts chapter 10 when Peter was caught up in a trance and then something came down from heaven. Imagine if Peter saw the trance and said, God forbid. No Cornelius house, no salvation of the Gentiles, all of us will be going to hellfire. We're spiritual Jews, but physically we're Gentiles, I assure you. It was a salvation that happened in Cornelius house that spread to us. Dreams, visions. There are certain decisions I've taken over my life, over this ministry by the grace of God, that were on the strength of dreams and visions. God continues to show me visions today, directions, communications of the Spirit. So it is one way to know the revealed will of God. Now let me tell you something very quickly about dreams and visions. You don't have them at will. You have to learn this because through witchcraft and scientology you can be manipulated to start having and seeing things at will that is rubbish and jargon it is exclusively the ministry of the holy spirit communicating things to you according to the purposes of god not according to your desire so whether god reveals to me through a vision a prophetic experience a dream it is i can ask him 
right? And then pending on the gravity of the confirmation, he can use multiple spiritual channels. However, it is exclusively of the spirit. My calling to ministry, the peace and the joy, the conviction and all of that. But then visions, dreams, prophetic experiences have added to support my conviction. And today, millions of people are benefiting from that. The last dimension of the speakings of God over his revealed will is the prophetic. Now, I said prophetic experiences before. I mean, just any supernatural experience, but the prophetic. Let me say that and then we'll pray and tie it up. Have you been blessed? Listen carefully, please. The prophetic. Now, we just finished dealing on the subject of the body of Christ. And I told us, remember our teaching last week at Charity and Faith, that every provision about the will of God or every provision about the possibilities of God are embedded in the body. Is that true? Remember the teaching. It may not be at work in your life. It may not be a dimension open to you as a person, a unique member in the body. However, that possibility is where? In the body. Is that true? Now, there are people scattered all around that God has committed and he's still trusting with the gifts of prophecy and others being called into the prophetic and all kinds of prophetic and apostolic offices that are helping the body communicate what is supposed to be the will of God. So we see from the Bible, Agabus was one of the prophets who God used to speak to Paul. Is that true? Saul and, 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 and all of that and, and then to speak to him. And all through scripture, we see that God has used prophets to speak to people. The prophetic is real and it can give direction. The prophetic is real and can give direction. The prophetic is a system and a ministry that God designed to help men access the mind of God and access the will of God. There are times here by the grace of God that we have called people through the agency of the prophetic and communicated words for them. I have counseled people and communicated things to them. Um, by the grace of God, they have run with these things and their lives have changed. So the prophetic is very powerful in communicating the revealed will of God, the unique will of God. However, however, let me say this and then we'll tie it up for tonight. There is... Or there are two big limitations to the prophetic in themselves. Number one is that the accuracy of reception and interpretation, write it. The accuracy of reception and interpretation is subject to the man of God's personal word content. The accuracy, listen, of both reception of the vision or the word and its communication is largely subject to the man of God's degree or his word content. Now, please look up. This is very important. I was teaching in Enugu and, 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 and I said this to them. I think it was during the minister's session. I told them that the danger with the prophetic is this. The manifestation of the gifts of the spirit, whether prophetic or any other manifestation, will never replace the place of getting the word of God seated in your heart. Are we together? Because I told you that one of the things we receive from the word of God is the character of God. Say the character of God and the operation of God. When you study the Bible, you know how God works. So with that knowledge of how God works, you will be able to interpret prophetic happenings in the light of the way God works. But most of the largely apostolic and prophetic voices that we've had, especially in recent times, are men and women who either transited from idol worship. Are we together? They also had their prophetic dimensions. And then they now stepped into the prophetic. And so there is that corruption because of the absence of the word of God. That inability to process spiritual 
things from the lens of the word of God is responsible for the error in both reception and communication. Remember when Jesus spoke to the man and his eyes were open the bible says he laid hands on him and he said what do you see the man did not see correctly he said he saw men like trees so if you were to ask that man to prophesy he would say this tree stand up was that a tree it was what his eyes saw son of man what seest thou an almond tree you have seen correctly meaning a man can see wrongly That does not mean you are of the devil, but that it is your word content that accelerates your degree of reception, number one, and two, your interpretation. Do you know that if I do not understand the scripture, for instance, God can open my eyes right now and I can look at Shalhoma. Are we together? Let's assume, for instance, that there is witchcraft in her family. Now, I have not studied the Bible to understand the dimensions of the operations of demon spirit in the lives of people. Any vision I see like that, I will call it demon possession because that is what my understanding has given me. So, when I see a spiritual thing wrong with her life, instead of separating it from her, I now look and say, Shahoma, stand up. You are possessed. Based on what I'm seeing, you are possessed. And I pray for her and she starts manifesting and she will go back wondering what her prayer and fasting has done and she's now saying so wow, I cannot understand I love God I am born again I'm filled with the Holy Spirit what is this one that I'm possessed again the name is not possession my inability to understand the word of God is what made me name it possession but the recipient now has received this as possession are you seeing the number one error with the prophetic so most apostles and prophets don't study the Bible because they think they are open and inclined to perceptions in the realm of the spirit and they feel if, if I can see why should I read it let me tell you something every time you attempt to operate the prophetic without the word of God your chances of dappling into witchcraft and error is very high no matter who you are you don't have to be fake the word of God is what gives they are the guidelines for operating the prophetic so you operate the prophetic within the jurisdiction of the word of God are we together if I look at Pastor Alpha and his wife, for instance, and God reveals something to me about Pastor Alpha or his wife that is quite serious and I know is capable of destroying their marriage. Now, watch this. I am seeing a vision. Something, for instance, about Pastor Alpha and his wife. Are we together? But I also know that God is not the author of confusion. He will not come and destroy a family. That understanding will help me in the communication. I may tell the wife, please see me after service. And I discuss it personally. Are you seeing that now? My inability to understand that I can open my mouth and just say something and say it to the man and think I'm communicating prophetically. And after service, they march straight to the court and get a divorce. Courtesy, the prophetic. Are you getting what I'm saying now? There are many women that have been made to leave their husbands. So said the prophet. Madam, this your husband is, is irrecoverable. The way he has already left the things of God into witchcraft. And the solution is to leave the man. Or to tell the man the solution is to leave the woman. Including men of God. Including different kinds of people. The prophetic that compromises the character of the word is not accurate any prophetic communication that compromises the character of the word of God is not accurate it should be re-edited and reconsidered both by the communicator and the recipient any dimension even if it's from Joshua Selman if it is not consistent with the character of the word of God why am I teaching you this look at me you are going to go for meetings in your lifetime you are going to meet great and mighty men prophets of God are we together 
and they are going to speak to you at one point or the other they are not fake they are not devils but you must have an, a discernment the moment you look at a prophet you should have discernment to process the spiritual level separate the gift from his spiritual growth that he's operating in the prophetic does not mean he's matured spiritually it's a gift are we together so chances are that he can speak to you and you know what part of the prophecy to receive and what part to throw into the dustbin. Otherwise, you will be in trouble. And then there are certain aspects of prophetic communications that are true, but they are coming to you so that you will change it. Not just sit down helplessly and make it happen. Are we together? Yesterday, I was... When we were, um, these guys did not even know. I'm sure they'll be surprised to hear it now. We're coming back and when we're going to the airport to come back, you know, someone called me and um, she was telling me that she had a dream and she saw a plane crash, you know, this and that, a plane crash. Uh, and, and truly, truly, this is somebody that I know that the, the word of the Lord, I know that she has a track record. Truly, truly, when she sees something or says something, it happens. And so she was afraid. She said, are you people going, you know, this and that and that? And I said, yes. And uh, I know what, imagine that I did not have the bank of the word of God. Till today I'll be in any war. Waiting for the day another word will come and say, now the road is clear. But now, what the person saw may not be wrong. But there is a more sure word of prophecy. Are we together now? So, that may be the plan of the devil for me to die yesterday in the air. Are we together? But I knew that if I enter, it will not crash. Now, that's another level of conviction. It's not about bragging. My strength is not on a, the written word of God that is more exalted above his name and any prophecy because we see in part and we prophesy in part. Are we together now? A man of God once prophesied to a woman, a very accurate man of God, young man and all of that. I, I don't know which of the cities he is in and all of that. He prophesied to a woman and um, he told her she was going to have a baby girl. And the woman was trusting God for a baby boy. She had sown seeds and this. she went to God and she said, Lord, I, I respect and honor that prophet, but it's a baby boy. I tell you that it's a solid, bouncing baby boy came out. Look, let me tell you. The part of scripture you believe is the part that works for you. If someone tells me today you are going to die, it may be true. God opened his eyes to see demons plotting on how to die. <laughs> I'll, 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 go and, I'll go and die. But I'm not even going to pray about it. I'm going to go home quietly and sit down. Even if the devil drives my car, he will take me home. Are you getting what I'm saying? You must, you must have a settled... Now, don't brag for nothing. I know the burning bush I have seen that gives me the audacity to make that statement. I've seen death eyeball to eyeball. I know it. I know how it looks. It knows how I look. So it's not that I'm just talking for nothing. Honestly. Tomorrow we're off to Ibadan again. Who knows what the devil is planning this night? Maybe they are planning and say, okay, we lost our chance. Now is the next chance. They are free to plan. The Bible never stopped them from planning. The power of performance is where the sovereignty of God comes in. He says, surely they will gather. But because their gathering is not of the Lord, they will scatter. Otherwise, you will land into trouble. Someone will look at you and say, Oh, you do not have a fallopian tube. Based on what God is revealing to me, Kai, there's no fallopian tube, no child. And you go back saying, Talk, the way this thing is, I will just go and adopt a child. And the man who married you is regretting and angry and wondering why. But the Bible says, And God opened the womb of Leah. It's none of your business where the child will grow. Whether it's your head, wherever, let the child grow and come out after nine months. It's none of your business where the child grows. History has recorded women who gave birth to twins with no womb.
twins, not even a child. Are we together? The will of God. Finally, there is a system that God built in the body to help us grow to a point of discernment where we can receive his revealed will. And that system is called praying in the spirit. Please write it down. There are not many systems to discernment. Praying in the spirit. I didn't know time had gone so much. Oh my God. Everybody say praying in the spirit. Say it again. Say praying in tongues. Now let me tell you something. Look up please. 1 Corinthians chapter 14. When you read verse 2, you read verse 4. It says, He that speaketh in an unknown tongue. Listen please believers. It says, Edifieth himself. Edifieth himself. He that speaketh in an unknown tongue. Does what? Edifieth himself. The believer who does not pray in the spirit, I guarantee you, will have a hard time discerning the revealed will of God. You can check scripture and see it, but when it comes to your everyday decisions, as far as the advancement of your life is concerned, you will find out that you've not been able to build your spirit to rise beyond the level of the flesh. So the devil can manipulate your dreams. Are we together? Today, you will dream and see yourself in Abuja. Just when you, are, you want to find out the next day, you will see yourself in Ogun. The devil is playing with your mind. Because God is not an author of confusion. Are we together? Next, tomorrow, you see yourself in London. After seeing yourself four times, you give up using dreams and you sit down and you don't move forward again. Satan can manipulate dreams. But brothers and sisters, there is a level to which your spirit will rise. That no power of darkness will near anything that is a channel for spiritual communication in your life. There is no devil who will come to me in my dreams and manipulate me. No, 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 no. no. Even in my sleep, there is a garrison of the word of God. Praying in the spirit. Praying in the spirit. Praying in the spirit. When you cultivate the art of praying in the spirit, you are not only granting access for your petitions. You are not only challenging the powers that be. Listen, you are edifying yourself. And one of the ways to edify yourself is to build yourself to a point where you sustain the ability to discern. Many believers do not have discernment. Many believers do not have discernment. God will want to communicate certain realities to us, but our spirits are too dappled in the flesh. We cannot receive the promptings of the spirit. When his will is done, his kingdom comes. The will as written from scripture should be obeyed to the latter without any compromise. But that part of the will that has to be revealed is accessed largely through discernment. Discernment will also help you to dream correctly, not dream foolishly. You are trusting God for direction, a serious direction. You have a dream and you saw yourself drinking ice cream. How does that relate to what you are laboring and fasting for? Don't laugh. In the Bible, when men slept, God showed them dreams that were consistent with their desires. But right now, dreams have been devalued because we are communicating carnally. The devil is a liar in the name of Jesus. Rise up on your feet. We are going to pray. Three quick prayer points very quickly. Three quick prayer points. Make sure you pray them with all your heart. Prayer point number one, Lord, grant me grace to be obedient to your will as revealed in scripture. Go ahead and pray. Go ahead and pray. There are dimensions of his will that has been revealed in scripture. You don't have to ask God. All you need is the grace. All you need is the grace to walk in it. Are you praying, Koinonia? Inside and outside, pray. Grant me grace. Grant me grace. It is your will for me to prosper. 
is already revealed in scripture grant me grace to live by the principles it is your will for me to succeed in my exams is revealed in scripture grant me grace grant me grace it is your will for me to rise and be world class may i never doubt your written will for me let the consciousness of what you have written in the bible give me confidence it is your will for me to be healed i receive grace to never accommodate sickness in my life it is your will for me to give birth grant me grace to never accommodate barrenness in my life please pray pray you are building yourself if you must fulfill destiny it will only be according to the will of god and the first dimension of his will is his written will access from scripture hallelujah 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 listen never ask god if it's his will over something that has been clearly stated in the bible don't ever ask god if it's his will to heal you don't ever ask god if it's his will for you to live long are we together don't ever ask god if it's his will for you to prosper don't ever ask god if it's his will for your business to expand it's his written will second prayer point you're going to pray and say lord every direction i need that i have not directly found in scripture I pray that you reveal it to me. Please pray. Every direction I need. For the next level of my life. For the next level of marriage, relationship. For the next level of business. For the next level of ministry. Reveal it to me. It is within your power. Lord, use the instrument of peace and joy use the instrument of peace and joy use the instrument of dreams visions prophetic encounters lord even use the prophetic ministry speak to me let my confusion of decades melt away with one assured direction from you let my confusion of decades melt away let my confusion of decades melt away let my confusion of months let my confusion of years melt away where to go what job to do what business to take who to marry how many children to have lord i believe you your revealed will i'm at a sensitive period in my life i cannot make mistakes pray I need a clear direction. I cannot afford to make mistakes over my academics. I cannot afford to make mistakes over my marital destiny. I cannot afford to make mistakes over the business that I should be engaged in. I should not be at a loss because of lack of knowledge of your will over the geography the geography my location reveal your will to me oh god reveal your will to me oh god hallelujah hallelujah let me tell you many of you will return with testimonies from this teaching because so many of us right now do you know listen let me tell you do you know why many christians don't move forward 
because they have been brought to the awareness that taking a step outside of the will of God will cost you. So most Christians are marking time because they want to make sure they are sure of their decisions, which is why you must pray. Because it is the devil's plan to manipulate the revealed will of God so that when you don't hear it, you don't move forward. Are we together? I'd like you to pray and say, Lord, build my spirit man to a point where I receive your will without error and without manipulation. Lift your voice and pray. Build my spirit man. 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 Kabarato soto kapashabaradabaladaba. Build my spirit man in the name of the Lord Jesus. Build my spirit man so that I can discern your will. I can discern your will. Build my spirit man. No manipulation of my dreams. Build my spirit man. No manipulation of my visions. Build my spirit man. No manipulation of the prophetic experiences that come to me. My God and my King. Give me sound experiences that will convince me of your will beyond the shadow of a doubt. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus Christ, may the confusion over where to be located, may the God of heaven settle that matter in our lives may the confusion over when to marry who to marry where to marry be settled once and for all in our lives in the name of Jesus may the confusion over what business to do and where to do it and with whom to do it be settled in the name of Jesus Christ anyone here who is currently in a season of strange confusion it looks like everything is confused in your life you are a christian you love god but you are confused about marriage you are confused about career you want to leave zaria you don't know whether you should live or not you don't know whether you should get into ministry or get a job i pray tonight in the name that is above all names I pray that through your dreams and the visions of the night, may the will of God be revealed to you. May the will of God be revealed to you. May the will of God be revealed to you. I pray for you. Anyone here who is in any business, any relationship, any association, any ministry, whatever it is, that you are currently involved in that is not the will of God and you are seeking answers to know I'm praying for you in the name of Jesus whether to work with a certain man of God or not whether to work with a certain ministry or not whether to have a ministry of yourself or be under someone may that revealed will be communicated to you expressly may that revealed will be communicated to you expressly there are a number of us who are asking God whether to just be entrepreneurs or take jobs or combine both. We don't know what we want. Some of us want to go to the military. Some of us want to go to the banking sector. Some of us want to even go and start studying fresh degrees again. It's important that you hear God. Don't just do things because you want to do it. There is a way that seemeth right unto a man. The Bible says, but the end thereof are the ways of death. Tonight, we agree in this place that in the name of Jesus, everyone here who has a, an issue of confusion, between now and the end of next week, may my God clear those areas of confusion. May my God clear those gray areas of confusion. May my God clear those areas of confusion. Hallelujah. Lift your hands and give God praise. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Please, let's keep standing very quickly. Hallelujah. We're rounding up now. Our time is almost gone. Keep standing. Um, please permit me to make an altar call. I know our time is gone, but I don't want us to assume that everybody here is saved. 
and please if if by now you should know whether you are saved or not or whether you want to rededicate your life to christ so if you are here brothers and sisters you're inside outside in any of the overflows and those following us online you're here and you heard me speak and you know that your life has been in a state of confusion first and foremost you are not even in christ you have not genuinely surrendered your heart to god or number two you have done so but for some reason you are saying lord i'm tired of this confusion daily darling between god and other things and i want to make my way straight with god it will be my pleasure to lead you right now in one minute so wherever you are please summon the courage to make it to the front right now wherever you are koinonia appreciate them if there are any people like that god bless you god bless you god bless you they are coming god bless you god bless you god bless you don't be ashamed don't be afraid it is the will of god that you be saved is the will of God that you start a fresh journey God bless you please hurry up if you are coming Koinonia celebrate them they have heard the word of the Lord tonight and it's the beginning of a new chapter in their lives make sure you don't sit back when the Lord is speaking to you we've spoken about the will of God you know that is the will of God for you to be saved is the will of God for you to have a fresh start make your way to the front hallelujah thank you so much for coming out some of you are making a decision for jesus for the first time some are rededicating themselves lift your hand hi i'm um, just one any of them your right hand is enough say after me lord jesus i love you say it from your heart i love you i believe in you that you died for me you shed your blood for me and tonight I receive you as my Savior and my Lord. I am tired of living my life by myself and by my own terms. I hand over everything to you. I choose to walk in your will. I choose to walk in your light. I choose to walk in your love from today I receive eternal life into my spirit. I'm a child of God. I am born again in the name of Jesus Christ. Congratulations. Thank you so much for making that decision. I'd like you to follow the gentleman waving his hands. Please make sure you do follow him. He will have your details and you'll be back to your seat. Let's honor them. Honor them, Koinonia. from and if you've got any testimony for us kindly share with us thank you for watching